Today I'm imagining myself as one of the Israelites, one of that great crowd of up to a million people that had come out of Egypt and were moving slowly towards the Promised Land. And they eventually came to Sinai. That's the mountain right behind me here, also known as Mount Horeb. And it's on Sinai that Moses went up the mountain and met with God. It's on Sinai, it's the one place where God actually wrote himself on those tablets of stone and presented them to Moses to bring down and to share with the people. And so this is a very powerful, very meaningful place to be. The Israelites were probably camped not right where I'm standing here because it's a bit narrow, but if you go over a little bit down the valley, it broadens out and I'm sure there's space for all of those people and their flocks and for the miracles that were to happen to them. But you maybe wonder, why did God give the Ten Commandments at that very moment? We'd gone all the way from Genesis 3 when sin came into the world up until now without the need for commandments. Um, there was natural law, there were issues that went on, there was clearly sin and repentance and the, the need. But here in Sinai, the people have come out of slavery. They have had 400 years, much of that time where they can't do what they want to do themselves and while they have still worshipped the God of heaven, they have also been pushed towards all sorts of other directions and in Egypt you will find there is a God for everything. You can worship a dung beetle, you can worship the sun, uh, you can worship cats and everything in between, the crocodiles in the river, everything is something to worship. And God wants his people to know that he is the one true God, he is the special God, he is the God of Israel, the God of creation, the God of everything. And so he says in Exodus chapter 20, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery, you are to have no other gods before me. And I think that's a very natural sequence when God is so much more powerful than all of these, these gods of the Egyptians. If he is that powerful, if he is powerful enough to part the Red Sea, if he is powerful enough to provide manna every morning so I've got food to eat, if he's powerful enough to lead me to freedom, why would I want to worship a dung beetle? Why would I want to worship a cat? Why would I want to worship a crocodile? I want to worship the true God of heaven. And so he then goes through with these lists of commandments, but really you can see them as a list of guidance. Why would I bow down to a graven image when I can worship the God of heaven? Why would I not want to take one day a week to especially spend time with God? It's wonderful here in this monastery that you specially spend time with God every day and they have periods of quiet meditation and I, I think it's great. Uh, for those of us that live in this fascinating world of technology, I have my phone here. It's totally useless. I can't contact my family because I have no internet. I have a time where I can just break away from the technology and can have a time of reflection and, and that's what the Sabbath is about. Honour my father and mother, why would I not when God is my heavenly father? And the other commandments through there as well, just giving me positive guidance to live by. These aren't harsh commands, these aren't things to make life difficult for me. They are things that as an Israelite coming out of slavery, having to relive and relearn certain values towards God and towards my fellow man, this is guidance for life. This is guidance that Jesus in the New Testament could then sum up very, very simply as love God, love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the principles that I really appreciate being able to live by.